So we're only dealing with class A, B, and C when we are deploying our IPv4 addressing. And it's important to understand whether an IP address is a class A address, a class B address, or a class C address. So here we can see that class A is going to be represented in a very, very specific fashion. It's when the first bit is set to zero. So if you have an address in binary that starts with zero in the very first octet, it's a class A address. For a class B address, they all start with one zero. And for a class C address, they all start with one one zero. One one zero. And then that right there represents class A, B, or C. Now, how does that work? Why does that work? Well, I want you to focus right now on the class A option. The class A option says it starts with zero. So if we have a value of zero in the first, uh, in the first bit position of the first octet, and then we had zero, 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 zero. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then an address of all zeros is not valid in the first octet. So we'd have to have at, minimum, at least a one. Then we have a value of one in the first octet. So you can see here that the starting would be one. But now what if I changed all those zeros to a one except for the first one? So that's fixed. I can't change that. One, one, one. One, so it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, equals what now? Well, we have 64 plus what? 64 plus 32 plus 16 plus eight plus four plus two plus one equals a grand total of 127. So our range for class A is one to 127, but notice it says 126 here. The reason why is, we, we cannot assign 127 addresses to end station. 127 addresses, as you can see at the bottom, are reserved for loopback testing. So if you went to your PC and you typed in ping 127001, it allows you to test the TCP IP stack on your local device. Is it working? If you get a successful response, then the TCP IP stack is working on your device. So it's for local loopback testing of yourself. So in reality, our... Class A goes from 1 to 126. Now, what about our class B, 128 to 191? Well, the same idea applies, except our first two bits are fixed. So it's always 10 at the beginning. You can't change that. So if it's 10 with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 zeros, that equals 126 at the minimum. Then if it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, then the, it equals 191 in total if you convert all of those binary values to decimal. And same thing with class C, except now the first three values are going to be fixed. So the first three values being fixed to 110, you'll have 110, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, which is 192. And then you'll have 110, which would equal 223. So you don't necessarily have to convert to binary to figure out whether it's a class A, B or C address, do you? No, you just have to know the very first decimal number. So if you're looking at the address 10.1.1.0, is that a class A, B, or C? Well, all you have to do is compare this value to this range of numbers right here. Because you already know class A is 1 to 126. So does 10 fall within that range? Yes, it does. So it's a class A address. What about 172? 172 falls between 128 and 191. Guess what? Class B address. And then lastly, 192. That falls within this range, 192 to 223. So it's a class C address. So depending on the very first value in the very first octet, in decimal, you'll be able to figure out whether it's class A, B, or C. And it doesn't matter. You might be thinking right now, hey, well, what about the subnet mask? That doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. You're class A, you're always a class A. You're class B, you're always a class B. You're class C, you're always a class C. Always, 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 always. There's no exception to that rule. And based on the fact that whether you're a class A, B, or C ultimately determines how big your network and host portion is. So the network portion of a class A is really small, but it can contain a ton of hosts. You see that? First octave, first eight bit represent your network, the street you live on, and then... Three octets represent the host, the house number. 
So in this case, we have a street with a ton of homes on it. With a class B, you have the first two octets that's your network, so your street name as an example, if you're looking at a real world scenario, and the host portion being much smaller, only two octets. So you have a medium, you have a street with a medium sized number of hosts when you compare it to a class A. In your class C, you have a street with a small number of hosts on it. And as I mentioned before, the number of hosts, 16 million by default for class A, 65,000 for class B, and 254 for the class C.